Hello, I'm Atuba George and thank God it's Friday. Praise God. Now, listen, listen, listen. Sit down with this truth. You know what you do with them? No need to argue. You know, I, 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 it's foolish to argue scriptures. Very foolish. I, I'm telling you, it's foolish. You know why? When you argue scriptures, you're not arguing the word of God. You're arguing people's testimony. And this is what this is. It is people's testimony. Everything you read here was told to someone who believed he had or experienced by someone who believed it should be written. Now, don't make that mistake of thinking someone sat down and said, Lord, they take the Bible for me. And God began to say Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. And then he began to write. In the beginning, God, uh, and he began to write until he got to Revelation. No, sir. No, 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 no. These are people's experiences. These are people's thoughts. These are people's, listen, even, even, oh. I pray God gives you understanding. Even the New Testament epistles that you read, you know, say Paul wrote most part of the New Testament. Hey, 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 he, when he was writing those things, he, he didn't think he was writing anything like Bible. He was simply writing letters to his partners and his friends, just like we do today. See, some of you, you know, and then we, we call them scriptures. See, no, the, the, the Bible said, hey, the Bible says nothing. People spoke in the Bible. Praise God. So, so he said, the Bible says, you know, sometimes people in their mind say, ah, that means God said. No. Paul said, yes. David said, yes. Jeremiah said. Of course, you see, sometimes they are quoting God because they are speaking in prophecy. So they, are, they will say, thus says the Lord. See, when they say, thus says the Lord, they are quoting what God has said. I hope you all understand what I'm saying. But now, why am I telling you this? So when people come to argue scriptures, it is real foolishness, especially when both of them are believers. You don't argue scripture with a believer. It's silly. You know why? I'll tell you why. The author of the scripture is the Holy Spirit, and he is alive, and he lives in us. So if there is something that is not clear, you don't argue it. You share your thoughts. You know, this is what I think. And then if you don't accept or believe it, or it's too hard for you to take it, you know what to do? I said, okay, thank you. I'll, I'll think about it. And then you go before the Lord and say, Lord, what's that all about? What is the meaning of that? And then the Holy Spirit, who's the author? He's the one that will tell you, no, that's not what I said. See? Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, that, that's, not, that's not what I said. This is actually what I said. And I said, oh, thank you, Lord. Now, that has happened to me several. You see, when I hear people preach sometimes, I'm like, Lord, I've never heard that before. So, what's the meaning of that? And then the Lord said, that's, I didn't say that. Oh, oh, really? So, where did he get it from? Oh, the, sometimes the Lord even goes as far as telling me where the person got it from. <laughs> it, it's that amazing. So, I'm like, oh, oh. Thank you. So now I know the truth. About, listen, a preacher shouldn't preach what he thinks. A preacher's job is to tell you what the Lord has told him. That's the job of a preacher. A preacher doesn't preach what he learned in school. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Now, he, he can tell of someone's experience. He can tell of his experience in school. But he doesn't say, this is what it is because we were taught this in Bible school. Wrong! The job of a preacher is to receive from the Lord. So if your preacher is not receiving from the Lord, he is not qualified to be your pastor. He's not qualified to be your preacher. When a preacher is teaching, you need to listen to what he is saying from the Lord, not his own failure experience. You know, sometimes I say, you know, you know, by experience, I have learned not to try these things. Come on, come on, come on. That experience has many factors to it. You, you could have been doing it without faith. So don't tell me that experience of failure. Did Jesus say we can do it? 
if Jesus said we can do it, then, then it's, it's, it's left for us to go before the Holy Spirit who has been given to us and ask him that question. Lord, how are we supposed to do this? See, I was talking to someone one time and he said, oh, but, but these things are so hard. I said, no, it's not hard. Because he said his commandment, John actually said that his commandments are not grievous. Now, I believe John was saying the truth. So what do you do? Instead of you thinking, how do I go to the Lord and say, Lord, how do I, how do, I do this? How, how am I supposed to do this? You know, for example, someone say, ah, my, my, I don't earn so much. And, and I need to pay tight again. I need to do, hey, 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 hey. Go before the Lord. I say, Lord, how do I handle all this? I have all these bills to pay. So what do I do? I'll tell you something. When he gives you an instruction, see, what are we talking about? Trusting the Lord as your source. That's all I'm telling you. So you go to him. If he's your source, you will not be looking at your salary and trying to calculate how it's going to pay the bills. If he's your source, you're going to be looking to him and asking him what to do with your salary. I'm telling you the truth. You ask the Lord, how do I spend this money that's just coming in now? <laughs> and then he will tell you, do this and do this. Pay this bill, give this person this, give that person this. And I tell you, oh, this thing, that's the most comfortable place to live in. I, I wish I can make you know these things. You go before the Lord and no matter how much the money is, once you receive any money, the first thing you should be thinking about is, Lord, I've gotten some money. What should we do with it? That's how God's children live because that's what shows you depend on the Lord. Why are we talking about this early in the year? I told you from the beginning, this is where your major distraction is going to come from. This is where many people are going to be led astray. So I'm teaching you this. So your heart will be strengthened and fortified. So when the temptations come, you will just wipe them off. Praise God. And you will get into what God is leading you to do. Hallelujah. Enjoy this weekend like never before. Now, this is the first weekend in 2020. Praise God. So listen, don't let anything bring your spirit down. You know what to do? Take these words. Get them into you more and more and joy will come to you. God bless you. Until Monday, bye-bye.